It's wine time on The Housey Life. Many of you have asked about how wine is made from the grape all the way to the bottle. I've got the answers for you. We're excited about telling you it all. Nathan underscore 17 underscore zero. What inspired the beginning of your amazing winemaking? Well, you have to understand, we, we've been growing grapes since I was about five years old. So we've been growing grapes for about 42 years, 43 years. So I grew up in a vineyard. The winemaking part came later. So there's really two different parts to this. There's the growing part of it, and then there's the winemaking process. Um, I started liking wine in my mid twenties and I've gradually liked it more and more as I've gotten older. Uh, so I'm, in, I'm a part of the wine process. Our whole family is in different ways, even Tamara. Tamara helps taste the wine and gives, gives us her opinion and helps design wine like our, our field blend. In fact, Tamara helped design the field blend wine right here, which has three different varietals in it, Cab, Zin, and Petite Syrah. Um, but for the actual wine making process, I, I just liked it ever since I had a chance to get my hands on grapes. And then when I came home, as I got older, uh, it became more fun to be out there and to see the, the crop go from the field to two years later, for example, for a red wine into the bottle. We have a great winemaker, that's the important thing. So I'm not a winemaker, but I work with our winemaker directly to design these wines uh, and then put them in the bottle and sell them. Kimmy Lam one asks, is winemaking like growing other crops where you have to rotate the soil, a pH of the soil, grow different things in different areas? Uh, so yes and no. You do have to um, till the soil. You have to make sure that the, the grapes get enough water depending on how old they are, how much you need to water them. But when it comes down to changing and growing different crops there, no. Once you, once you plant a grapevine, that grapevine's there until you tear it out. So you don't change it every year. In fact, it takes three years for a grapevine, once it's planted, to actually have a crop. Two Gen 10 2 asks, what kind of grape varieties do we use? Well, we grow Cabernet and Zinfandel, which also then turns into pink wine and also into our field blend. It's tough for a winery to grow every single varietal themselves, uh, but we do make all of our wine. So you kind of do a little bit of both. We grow our own grapes and at the same time we buy other people's grapes to make it into other wines. So right now we have Old Vine Zinfandel, we have a Chardonnay, we have multiple Rosés, we have a Petite Syrah, we got a number of Cabernets. We basically have 11 different wines right now, soon to be 13 different wines as things keep going forward. We're gonna have a, a sparkling wine for the first time. So the idea is to for, make a really good wine that's, that's not crazy expensive, something you're not gonna go down and find at the corner store for $9, but also something that's not gonna break the bank. Nenner16 asks, how do we name our wines? Well, we name our wines in a lot of fun ways. So for example, the easiest way, Adam and Tamara's Field Blend is named after Adam and Tamara because we decided on the blend we were gonna do. Um, A3H is named after my brother. So A3H stands for Eric uh, with an A, Alex and Elena with Hannah, his wife. So A3H, that's the name. Arch Nemesis Rosé is named after my dad because he says, we always joke that Rosé was his nemesis because we had to, he had to actually do an extra step to make the rosé, which means take the skins off. So we had fun with that one. Sister wine, that one came up from just me sitting in Tamara and Lonnie's uh, dressing room one day and I was bored. And uh, they were talking about being sisters and so I came up with the idea of sister wine. The rest just have our name in them. We have Housley Napa and then we have Housley Century Oak Winery. So Judy's Vineyard is named after my mom. It's the vineyard of Cabernet. It's Judy's Vineyard, it's the estate Cabernet and the Old Vine Zippendale is Inez's Vineyard. That's named after my grandma. Miss Sunny 928 asks, what would you suggest as a lighter wine for beginners on uh, introduction to wine or tastings? I'm really not a big fan of most wines that I've tried. Well, what draws you to wine are two things, the flavor and the sugar. I would recommend starting with a rosé and try to find ones that are more dry that'll help you take your next step, which would be into white or red wines. We have three different rosés. The first one is Sister Wine. This one has just a little bit of sugar in it. It's not as sweet as most of the rosés you might find in the store uh, because it takes a little more time to make rosé without sugar. I'll explain that in a second. Then we have the Housing Sonoma Pinot Noir Rosé, which is very light, very delicate, and it's not sweet, but it's got fruit. And the last one is Arts Nemesis, which is my favorite of the rosés. It's one day of skin contact, so look how much darker that is. This is red wine without skin contact. This is red wine with skin contact. When you have a pink wine, it's actually a red wine. What makes red wine red are the skins. So pink wine is red wine without skins, without skin contact. A lot of sweet wine drinkers are people just getting into wine and they love this wine because it has a lot of fruit in it, 
but it's not sweet. It's actually dry. And you wouldn't know it sometimes when you drink it. Mrs. HPW asks, I'm a white wine person. How do you graduate to reds? Also, when will you ship to Oklahoma? Well, we have a new distributor in Oklahoma called Artisan Fine Wines. So if you're in Oklahoma, uh, just go to your local store or restaurant and tell them that we're carried by Artisan Fine Wines out of Tulsa. They're our distributor. It's a female owned distributorship, so that's pretty cool. If you're a white wine drinker and you start going into red, again, you wanna find something that's, I think, fruity. So I would recommend our Petite Syrah or something like it. Petite Syrah is jammy, it's ripe. Um, if you smell it, it might even smell like raisins or dark plums. Um, and I call it a mind trick, because when you smell it, you think, oh, there's sugar in this, but when you drink it, it's dry. Maybe we could do a virtual wine tasting. That's something that might be interesting as well, where you could get the wine to your doorstep, and we can do a virtual wine tasting with you right here on The Housey Life. Triple G 14 says, they just visit us here. Beautiful spot in the Napa Valley. I love it, the people were great, the wine was great, and I will be back. Thank you. The idea when you come here is very simple. Be kind, that's it. <laughs> one rule, be kind. We want everyone to come here and enjoy themselves. We don't care who you are, old, young, gay, straight, left, right, black, white, like whatever, I mean, green, purple, doesn't matter. You come here, you're gonna be welcome. Everyone comes here to enjoy themselves and enjoy each other. And we see people from all walks of life become friends here. It's pretty cool to watch. So D Camille 9 asked, Adam, I like Chardonnays, but what's the difference between Chardonnay, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, and Pinot Grigio? Well, first of all, the similarities. All three of them are wines that are aged without skins. They're actually fermented without skins and they're aged without skins. Um, and then they also go into stainless steel tanks. So when they're harvested from the field, they basically are put through a strainer, they go right into a stainless steel tank, that's where they're fermented, that's where they stay until they're bottled. So the similarities with our three are that. Now the differences, Chardonnay inherently has some butter in it as part of the fermentation, uh, fermentation process. Um, Pinot Grigio, a lot of Pinot Grigios don't finish, meaning you don't have a you don't have a taste a couple seconds later. Ours does, ours has a great finish to it. It's very fruit forward. I think it's the most delicate of the three. And the Sauvignon Blanc is just right down the middle Sauvignon Blanc. It's a nice crisp with some apple and citrus to it. Um, I, I actually even say our Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc kind of favor each other. But all three are great wines uh, and they all have a little bit of differences to them. Simply Me asks, why should wine be stored on its side? Well, there are two types of wine. The one with the screw top doesn't need to be stored on its side because it's a screw top wine, so it doesn't matter at all, which should give you a hint. If the wine does not have a screw top, like this one, which is our estate Cabernet, it needs to be stored on the side so the cork stays moist. Because if it's like this, the wine stops right below the cork, which means the cork will dry out, which means you have that crumbly cork sometime when you pull it. You don't want that. You want that cork to be nice and moist and keep it expanded in the bottle. That little bit of liquid will do that. So keep it on its side, it keeps the wine better and it keeps the cork better. And it makes for a much better bottle of wine when you open it a year or two down the road. Octavia asks, Adam, what's your favorite wine versus what's Tamara's favorite wine? Or do you guys have the same taste in wine? We actually have the same taste in wine in a lot of ways. I mean, there's sometimes that Tamara's like, mm, no. And sometimes where I'm like, oh, that's good. But for the most part, we actually like wine about the same. I mean, uh, we've been together for a long time, so maybe that's part of it. But we enjoy all types of wine. We'll, we'll drink rosés, we'll drink whites, we'll drink reds. I will say we favor reds more. Uh, we drink more Cabernets, I would say, and, and Petite Syrahs and uh, blends, that kind of thing. Tamara does like champagne. I'm not a big champagne drinker. Um, and she will drink sometimes whites or pinks more with her friends. I'll drink more reds with my buddies. but. Um, we kind of have the same taste in wine. And she has a better palate. She definitely has a better palate than me, which means she can taste little intricacies that I, I either say it's good or bad. A wine pairing episode with Tamara and I could be fun. Would you guys like to see that or anything else involved with wine and Tamara and myself? Uh, let us know in the comments down below. Mary Angel Carter asks, what's the Housie's absolute favorite wine for date nights? Cabernet pretty much. I mean, a Napa Cab or a Lodi Cab or a a California Cabernet is tough to beat, especially if it's made really well. Right now, not because it's ours, but we've been drinking our reserve a lot. This reserve Cabernet is just fabulous. Spent two years in the barrel, uh, two years in French Oak. So for a date night, we like, some, we like a nice, bold, flavorful red. Nande Lungelwa, I'm saying that wrong probably, but she asks, advice for someone wanting to get into winemaking? Well, I would first thought I would do is, uh, obviously you like wine. Then I would make sure I'd maybe go online. There's some free online classes and things. You can find tons of stuff out there you can find about winemaking online. I would watch the videos, kind of just get that vibe to see if it's something you really want to do. Um, and then I would maybe try to find a job with a winery if you could. 
Um, there's wineries in every state, I believe, now in the country. Even Alaska, I believe, has a winery. Um, so you can find jobs at a winery, even if it's just part-time, start to get that that feel of it's something you want to do. And then maybe look to go into school to do that uh, or get hired as an apprentice. A lot of winers are looking for people to get in and, and to learn the process and willing to start from the bottom up. Mish yeah. Webster asks, do you think Aiden or Arwile will continue the legacy? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not gonna pressure them. Whatever they wanna do, Aiden's already said that he wants to play soccer and baseball. He wants to maybe own a car dealership, but ultimately he's gonna work in the tasting room. He wants to run the tasting room for daddy. Um, and he works here now. I mean, I grew up in a small business with my parents. Uh, I watched them start a small grocery store and we worked there from five years old on. Aiden likes to, to wipe the counters down and, and wash the glasses and, and greet the customers. Orion's still kind of young at five. She's still kind of, she loves coming here and visiting, but she hasn't really gotten it yet. Aiden gets it. He told me the other day he can't wait till he's 21 so he can start trying to wine. Also, many of you want to know how to find our wine. So there's two ways to get our wine. It's distributed in your state or we send it to you. So to find out if it's distributed in your state, go to our website, HowsleyNapaValley.com, HowsleyNapaValley.com or CenturyOakWinery.com, CenturyOakWinery.com. You'll be able to find out where we're distributed in which states. If we're not in your state, just let us know if you know a distributor or someone that wants to bring us in. We'd love to work with you. Uh, otherwise, we can ship to anybody just about. And we have very affordable rates. In fact, we're paying for one third of all the shipping right now. I'd like to hear any more questions you have about wine and if maybe some of the industries that you grew up in. I always like to hear what other people grew up in and, and maybe uh, their family businesses and how they uh, got involved or if their children are going to get involved. So let us know all that in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to The Housey Life.